Welcome to the Interpreting Even Tricky Regression Coefficients Workshop. This is Karen Grace Martin of The Analysis Factor, and I'm so glad you've joined us. In this introduction video, I'm going to go over two things to get you oriented to the workshop. First, I'll do a workshop overview to tell you what we'll do in each of the modules. Then I'll go over the three data sets we have available. I'll use these in the examples and you can download them from the introduction page of the workshop website so you can use them for the exercises or for trying out the examples yourself. In module one, we're going to do a review of regression models with continuous predictors. This is probably what your regression class focused on if you've taken one. Even if you have, you'll find it helpful to review these concepts and see how they play out in real data. If you haven't had a specific regression class, for example, if your training focused more on ANOVA, you'll find this especially helpful. So first we're going to do a review of simple linear regression, which is a regression model with a single predictor variable. And we'll go through what each of the terms of the model mean. And then we're going to go through multiple regression with only continuous predictors. And it turns out that nearly in all data sets, the predictor variables are correlated with each other. And often there's not too much time or effort spent on this in regression classes because it complicates things. However, in order to really interpret your results, you need to understand the implications. And I see all the time where people haven't really internalized these concepts. So we're going to talk about that in detail, and that's a really important concept. Okay, then in module two, we will talk about three different issues of scaling of the variables, the dependent and the independent variables. That includes standardized versus unstandardized coefficients. What's the difference? When do you use them? What do they mean? Transformations and link functions. So for example, if you have to transform data, do a log or a square root transformation in order to make your assumptions work, what are the implications for understanding your results. And then third, centering predictors. Centering is one of those topics that's mentioned a lot. It's actually very simple to do. And in some cases, there are not a lot of benefits. But as you get into more complicated regression models, centering becomes more and more helpful. They don't, it does not necessarily change your results, but it does often make interpretation easier. So we're going to talk about centering. Okay, then in part three, we're going to finish up the topics that are involved with only continuous predictor variables. And we're going to talk about a few different multiplicative terms. First, we're going to talk about polynomial or specifically quadratic terms and how those allow your linear model to actually include some curvature. So we're going to talk about what that means and how to interpret those terms and how it affects the interpretation of the other linear terms in your model as well as the intercept. We're also going to talk about interactions between two continuous variables. Interactions aren't talked about a lot in regression classes, but they're actually very important. And there's no reason not to do interactions with continuous variables, and they're often the most interesting effects in your model. So we're going to introduce the concept of interactions, talk about how to interpret them, and what it means and how to figure out what it means when you have two continuous predictor variables that are interacting. And then third, just very briefly, we're going to talk about what it means to have an interaction between a quadratic term and another variable in the model. Okay, then in part four, we get to 
some really interesting stuff, start to talk about dummy coding. So when you have a predictor variable that's categorical and specifically binary, so there are two categories, and there are many of these, positive, negative for having some disease, or male, female, uh, graduated versus not graduated, all sorts of binary predictors. And it's really useful to be able to add these to your regression model, both as a main effect and as an interaction. Okay, so we're going to first talk very briefly about what dummy coding is and compare it to effect coding, which is what is used in ANOVA, and how those affect how you're going to interpret your coefficients and even your F tests. Then we're going to talk about specifically dummy coding binary predictors and what it means for your results. And then finally we're going to talk about interactions between a dummy coded binary predictor and a continuous predictor. Okay, then in part five, we're going to expand what we did in Module 4 to dummy code multi-category predictor. It's actually slightly more complicated. It's not a big leap. Once you understand the binary case, going to a multi-category case is not a huge jump. But we're going to go through those same three concepts for multi-category predictor. So dummy coding and adding a main effect with a dummy coded multi-category predictor and then adding an interaction between a dummy coded predictor with more than two categories and a continuous predictor. And then again very briefly we're going to talk about interactions between two dummy coded variables. Now that's something we often do just in ANOVA is include interactions between two categorical variables, but there's no reason you can't do it in the context of a regression equation or even an ANCOVA. It's the same basic idea. Really the difference is which part of the results you focus on, whether you're looking at that coefficient table, regression coefficient table, or the estimated marginal means, and often that's just a matter of which variables are the ones that your hypotheses are about. But we'll talk all about that in Module 5. And then finally, in our very last module, what we're going to do is just spend the entire time talking about a full model. So when you put them all together into a single model, what happens? How does it affect, how does including various other terms like interactions or polynomials or dummy variables, how does that affect interpretation of the other terms in the model? Whether you have standardized coefficients or centered variables and whatnot. We'll look at everything together because this is what you usually have when you're actually analyzing your data.